Swells here at TomSwells.com. I received a few questions regarding that last video I posted of one of my hockey players and how it pertains to the cerebellum. So uh, what could happen is you might feel some musculoskeletal issues, impingement in the shoulder, hip, sorry, this is the hip, this is the shoulder, um, neck issues, what have you. But if you've sustained uh, head trauma in the past, there could still be some residual symptoms ongoing. So when we look at visual fields, when we look at where the eyes can fixate, either an upper left quadrant, upper right, or the diagonals, it can give us an indication that if it's challenging to hold that gaze in one, in one area, the intermediate zone of the cerebellum might not be firing or communicating very well to that side of the body. So when we do this, we want to use gaze fixation to the deficient side, but also create some kind of stimulation to the spinal extensors on the backside. So if we have a glute that isn't firing after you do manual muscle testing, or you just can't feel it with a squat, doing some diagonal patterns or moving across the midline can help stimulate that midline of the cerebellum because you're crossing midline. Moving the hips and focusing on breathing and dissociating the spine will help the brain find that new center, okay? So just to clarify, you can just do it simply standing here and you're gonna move your body. So we call this teacup, it's a teacup drill, right? But if you stand like a robot and you don't move your body, it's gonna make it very difficult, especially if you have a few restrictions. So if I stand up straight, I'm not gonna get that over. So if I actually had a cup of tea, it would spill. But if I am paying attention and adapting my position to what the disc is telling me to do. So if I get stuck there, I gotta feel and find a way. Oh, okay, I don't drop the tea. Moving down to the ground, we can make it a little bit more specific to the hips, where we can add in our hip mobility pattern. And then I can move one arm, and then I can switch to the other one. And then I can come back, I gotta balance, I gotta slow down. I gotta focus on my breath, and I gotta not drop my tea. Feel what arm is going to allow me to move. And just make it as flowy as possible. So if you feel the opportunity to move one arm, move that one arm. And then reverse the patterns, go in another direction. Okay? So we're always just kind of crossing the midline of the body. Focusing on control. This really slows people down. My clients that they kind of burn through this. They're not paying attention to the foot, the ankle. They might get a little cranked into that knee because they're not pointing that toe. They're not fully locking up those hips. They're not creating control in that new balance line. Putting something in their hands to say don't drop this forces them to slow down and feel how they're moving through the, through the pattern. So give it a try, but think, don't think, feel more. So you don't want to be flowy. You always want to be kind of just listening to what your body is saying. And if you get stuck, breathe through it and the body will free up for you. Give it a shot. If you need more tips or tactics, head over to TomSwells.com. My YouTube channel is TomSwells13. Any questions? Any, any more clarification you need, just shoot me a message.